Why hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Subnautica video. Now this game, let's be honest, it can be freaking difficult at times, with sources of danger coming at you from every direction. Keeping a good supply of protective items and the first aid kits can definitely be a necessity to survive some of the harder areas. And so, with that in mind, I got the idea for a challenge. Yes my friends, you saw it in the title, it is time for another Subnautica challenge and today we're gonna be trying to see if I can complete the game without taking any damage. Or also, as I like to call this, god dang it, if I see another crash fish, I'm actually going to... <clears throat> Let's begin. Right, so the first challenge of this challenge, I suppose, would be to ensure that I can actually play the game without taking damage. You know, normally you have this hefty health bar, which even if you do take some damage, it you barely take notice. You know, maybe it takes a few percent, but overall it's something that's easy to miss. And so, I found a solution. To make sure that I will actually complete this round without taking any damage, I will be using the Take Damage console command to bring down my health by a specified percentage. If I do Take Damage 99, it will bring my health down to 1%, which ends up showing as 2 for some reason. But take my word for it, I tested it and taking one more bit of damage does actually kill you, so don't at me. Anyway, now that we were there in the world, which suddenly felt a lot more dangerous, I figured the first thing to do would probably be to get some resources and get myself some tools. I caught a Gary fish, broke some limestone, and just like that we had an O2 tank. I farmed some more, made myself some fins so we can swim a little faster because, let's be honest, I'm gonna have to be dodging danger at all times. I also noticed at this point that your health actually does regenerate a little bit, so I will just kind of have to keep repeating the take damage console command, which is a little bit annoying, but, you know, it is what it is. Oh, no, 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 oh, not the crash fish. Yeah, so that's a little foreshadowing of what's to come in the future. Crash fish are a mistake. One fabricator visit later and I had myself a scanner. And now I could actually get to do some real work. Or I would have if it wasn't for the crash fish exploding my behind. <sighs> okay, this this is not going to be fun, is it? Back to the loading screen it is. As opposed to just restarting to run every time. The goal here is to figure out whether it is possible, not whether I can do it in one go. So I'll just utilize plentiful saving and uh, hopefully get through everything. After a few minor scans, I got myself a sea glide, a quick farming trip later, I even got myself a repair tool and can finally fix the life pod. And next on the list I figured would be the laser cutter because my goal was to go explore the aurora as soon as possible. Now the laser cutter is found in the grassy plateau, so that's where I headed and let's just say um, it wasn't fun. I think I found every single fragment in existence uh, besides the laser cutter because of course I did. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, since I did the no water run last time, I almost forgot how annoying it can be to just go up and down for air constantly. Uh, so yeah, that's also a thing now. And then out of nowhere, that happened. Now it might not be entirely clear to you what happened there, but I think this slow down footage will actually show you. Yep, that's a freaking tiger plant one-shotting me in the back. Ugh. Why did I think this was a good idea again? Right, so anyway, laser cutter. I scoured all of the main big wrecks in the grassy plateaus, realized that exploring them with just a sea glide alone would not be possible, so I built myself an air pump and like a crap ton of pipes, traveled back to the said wreck, and deployed my new setup. And with this, I was actually able to get some work done. I got the propulsion cannon, which we probably won't be using to fly this time because we can just fly using water. Oh yeah, I even stopped by a life pod on my way back. <laughs> and at last, when almost all hope was lost, I found the final fragment for the laser cutter, and we were in business. Oh yeah, while traveling around, I also got lucky and managed to grab the mobile vehicle bay. Hey, and this time we're even gonna be able to deploy it, isn't that nice? Uh, the ship went... I got the radiation suit, which is actually just in time to start the Aurora exploration. I chopped chopped some creep vines, and just like that, we had the radiation suit. Alright, onwards and upwards to the Aurora, I suppose. What on earth was that? <laughs> okay. NPC survivors mod anyone? Ple please don't. Like, this run is already cursed enough as is. At one point I accidentally went a little too close to the mountain island, and by the time I started hearing the Reaper in the distance, my butt was about as clenched as could be. 
Then again, on the other hand, in this run, the Reaper is no more dangerous than the Crashfish, so you know, you win some, you lose some. Now the final thing necessary for me to be able to properly explore the Aurora was of course the laser cutter. To get the laser cutter, you actually need some relatively valuable resources, so I went to the Bulb Zone, which I was horribly under-equipped for, put down the craziest network of pipes, which still only got me like 100 meters deep, and then I just went on these crazy runs in the night, trying to get the resources and like desperately looking for the pipe. Honestly, I have no idea how I even made this, but by the time it got day, I actually managed to find some diamonds, so yay. A quick swim later, I was several valuable resources down, but richer for a laser cutter and totally ready to go explore the massive ship. Now I scoured the crash zone a little bit, looking for any valuable resources, I mean after all this place does have quite a few. Got a little closer with the reaper around than I would have preferred, and before long I was on the giant fiery ship. Now here I was gonna have to be extremely careful, because a single wrong move. Okay, that, that, that's, yeah, that's a cave crawler killing me. Anyway, as I was saying, a single wrong move here... Fire? No, there is no fire even there. How did... <clears throat> yes, every wrong move could potentially cost you your life. You've got to actually be joking. Unknown worlds. Where was the fire? Okay, I'm, you know, I'm not dealing with this. Like, seriously, whoever thought implementing fire would be a good idea? Right, uh, a little bit of parkour later, I was making my way through the collapsing ship collected some materials, grabbed some PDAs, and then it was onto the infested waters with the tiny uncomfortable bleeders. My first strategy was to just hack and slash at them with my knife, try to kill all of them, and then just have a good time exploring the water. Now this almost worked, but then I messed up and died, as you do in this run. So my second strategy, much refined, was to just swim fast like a madman and hope that none of them latch onto me. Somehow, this miraculously worked. I was going to repair the drive room, but then I just kind of gave up, because why? I cut open the sealed door, which we couldn't pass through in the non-water version, but this time, thank goodness, it wasn't nearly as difficult. He got into the prawn suit bay, scanned me enough blueprints to get a prawn suit. Ah, <sighs> thank goodness I found this thing. Uh, I really wouldn't be able to get through without it. Yoink. I went into the captain's quarters and got the blueprints for the Neptune escape rocket. And that was pretty much me being done with the Aurora. Not before burning to death one more time, of course. Now the way back from the Aurora wasn't nearly as di- Did I just die from fall damage? <sighs> okay. The way back from the Aurora wasn't nearly as difficult as the way in. I got all the way outside bef- Did a burning piece of the ship just fall on me? Are you actually serious? All right, so I got out of the ship, swam back to my life pod, procured myself a habitat builder, and then started planning how I would build the prawn suit, but I quickly realized that given where the parts for this thing are, it might be very difficult to look for it without a CMOD, so why don't I go get that one first? Oh, well, of course I don't have the blueprints for it, great. Right, so I swam to the grassy plateaus armed with my trusty sea glide. As per usual, I had the absolute worst luck in the universe when it comes to finding whatever blueprints I'm currently looking for. I was having such a good time, I even got one shot by the shooty plant again, for no reason at all. Yet eventually, miraculously, I somehow managed to scan all of the blueprints, and one not as short as I'd like to admit grind later, I had a Seamoth. Now, being in the Seamoth actually made me feel a little bit safer, it was like having this outside shell which would maybe protect me from some damage, but then again I would still have to get out of it to actually get stuff, so it's not like it's helping that much. The next order of business was collecting some rarer materials to be able to build the prawn suit. I once again went to the trusty bulb zone, this time exploring it wasn't nearly as much of a pain as it was the first time around because I at least had a good point of air, kind of situated almost 200 meters down. But the grind was certainly not fun. In retrospect, I wish I had built a bigger oxygen tank, but after a fairly painful grind which pretty much lasted the whole in-game day, I had all the resources necessary and was ready to head back. Oh yeah, on the way I also found some Cyclops fragments which I scanned just because I knew I would need them in the future. And boom, there it was, the famous prawn suit. Now I'm not gonna lie, I was feeling very accomplished at this point and I was kind of considering going on a reaper genocide, but I mustn't let the feeling of unlimited power overwhelm me. We have a job to do here. Now at this point, I could have technically already gone down into the deeper biomes, but I wanted to prepare for that a little better by doing a bit of extra crafting first. Namely, I knew I would need both the vehicle upgrade console and the modification station to be able to mod my vehicles to eventually 
go all the way down to the lava zones. Exploring the crag field with my new Seamoth was actually very pleasant, and I would even call it fun if it wasn't for the freaking shooting plants everywhere, like I swear literally everywhere. But I did get my modification station, and with a little leftover diamond I had, I was even able to build it with a makeshift base. While in the mushroom forest earlier, I even managed to pick myself a moon pool, and after installing some solar panels, we were actually in business. Now of course, I still didn't have the blueprints I needed, so I traveled to this wreck in the grassy plateaus, built my typical air pump pipe setup, I had a lovely time exploring it, I even managed to get out without any issue. Did I just actually die from electricity? I didn't even know that was freaking possible. <clears throat> I had a lovely time exploring it, and before long, there was the vehicle upgrade console. Awesome. Now at this point, there was no more delaying as I jumped into the prawn suit and started making my way towards the back of the Aurora. Hop, 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 I punched an annoying fish to death, and then I was there, at the precipice of the great depths, and an epic adventure below as I looked up for the last time and plunged down into the next episode, where we're gonna go explore the Lost River and the Lava Zones. How am I gonna get through the brine? How am I gonna get through the fact that in the Lava Zones, the freaking water damages you, and with all the annoying creatures sucking onto your vehicles, I'm not gonna be able to get out or- You know what? I'm not even gonna think about it, that's a worry for another time. But in the meanwhile, I really hope you all enjoyed, and if you did, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. All of those would be very much appreciated. If you have other suggestions for similar challenges or some advice for when I try for part 2, please make sure to leave that down in the comments as well, I would very much like to read it. And with that, I'm going to wish you all a beautiful rest of the day, and I'll see you all in whatever next episode I make. Bye-bye.